Hello, everybody. Pastor Rusty Martin, Island Church in Galveston, Texas. We're launching a new media ministry called Outdoor Adventures in Faith, and this is a very special program. It's Volume 1, Episode 1, and we're calling this The Art of Deception. We're going to use the, the waterfowl world to talk a little bit about decoys and blinds and calling. And what we do is we have 50 years of experience in, in guiding, outfitting, hunting waterfowl all over the United States and in Canada, uh, things we've learned, experience and seen that has to do with the art of deception. That's what it is. That's how you waterfowl hunt. Also, we want to uh, pull the spiritual side of that over into relating it to how the enemy also tries to deceive us. He is a master at the art of deception, but thank God for the truth which delivers us from his lies and from his deception. First of all, we're going to deal with decoys. This is our episode on, on decoys, which is pretty cool. <laughs> I've spent a small fortune on decoys over the years, uh, but they've had, for lack of a better word, a very unique evolution in the waterfowl industry over the years. First of all, the word decoy is a very unique word. It's one of those words that you can use as a noun and a verb. Number one, the word decoy as a noun is described as someone or something used to lure or lead another into a trap, used to distract or to draw your attention elsewhere. Then we know also as a verb or transient verb, it's to, it's to lure or to bring in as by a decoy or to use a decoy to bring close or to bring in. Now, the purpose for that is in waterfowl, is to get your waterfowl in close enough to make an ethical shot. There's nothing worse, as far as I'm concerned, than people that shoot at animals too far away, that they're they're not a very good shot, they leave them injured or hurt. That's not ethical, that's not right. We're very uh, uh, ethical around here. We do our best to be efficient with our shotguns, efficient with decoys, very efficient with our calling, and very efficient with our blinds. In doing so, we have success. We're able to, to harvest the birds that we desire to, to put in gumbo and to roast and to, and to give our friends and, and, lo and loved ones, people that come with us and hunt, an, an enjoyable hunt. So first of all, let's talk about how this industry has kind of evolved in our nation. Number one, back in the day, it goes all the way back. I've studied all the way back in the ancient times when they would harvest waterfowl by trapping or with, with spears, sticks, or, or bows and arrows. But, but back in the day when modern uh, uh, firearms begin to be developed and, and, and more efficient ways to uh, hunt ducks and geese, men begin to carve decoys out of wood. This is my oldest decoy, probably way over 100 years old, and it's from from Louisiana, a man carved this, and he would have had oh, a dozen, maybe two dozen of these that he would put out in a particular pond, would have a, a lead weight on the bottom to give it a little bit of ballast, and then there was a string with a lead weight on the bottom would hold it at whatever uh, depth that the pond was, and they would use these to lure in the particular ducks they were after. And so this would have probably been Oh, pre-World War uh, I, uh, right after World War I, right in that uh, particular time and era. And so these have become very co collectible, very valuable if you can get your hands on one. Now, as, uh, as men begin to develop a little more of the, their carving skills and begin to be, be more adept, men begin to actually carve decoys for, for retail purposes. This is one of those that was carved for re retail purposes. Same type of wood, which would be a, a cypress wood. But see, this one has a a detachable head that they could uh, use to turn in different positions to give uh, different looks so, and, you know, everything's not looking the same way. And so that would be something that would be considered a very modern, uh, not very modern, but a modern decoy back probably pre-World War II through World War II and right up into the last part of World War II. You would probably find these in sporting goods stores around the area. And then after World War II, World War II men begin to, men and women begin to discover how to work with plastics, how to work with uh, fiberglass, and so more of a, a modern era decoy, this would probably be post-World War II up through about the 60s, a plastic decoy. It's made out of hard plastic, and they you know, they paint them, and, and of course the, the line goes on the bottom with the weight. They got a little bit of a ballast in them. So that would be more of your modern decoy that you would see probably up until sometime in the 70s. But now this is 2023. What's unique to the, to the decoy industry would be a, a decoy more like this. This is a snow goose, goose decoy. Notice how how detailed uh, the feathers are, uh, the beak. Uh, all of this is done by what's called a master carver. Now, one of the, I would say, a, a tragedy of uh, our waterfowl industry here in the United States is most of our decoys are now made in China. 
and uh, a carver will go and he'll present a uh, something like this would be a, a wood, what's called a template, and they would uh, use that and then they would mass produce these out of plastic. This is a plastic decoy filled with filled with foam so it doesn't it's not destroyed very easily. Uh, but this is what we use today. They're very modern. They float very well. This would be the string with the weight on the bottom. It's got to be heavy enough so the wind doesn't blow it away. And so when the snow geese see it, they think. There's snow geese down there. When the when the mallards see it, they think there's mallards down there. We use that with a blind and and, and in hiding and covering ourselves up with calling. And, and as the season progresses, it's 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 more and more difficult. So you have to come up with more and more strategies. So it is. It's a it's an exciting sport to be a part of. It's exciting to see it to see how it's done. Uh, of course, we've. We've outfitted for many years and guided, but we love to go with guides and and do different things and see how other people hunt in other places in the country. It is an exciting, exciting sport to be a part of. But because this is Island Church and Outdoor Adventures in Faith, we want to relate it to spiritual things. There are things in life that can truly be a decoy to you, which the adversary or your enemy uses. The Bible says in the Gospel of John chapter 10, verse 10, it's the thief that cometh not but for it to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I'm come that you might have life and then that you might have it in abundance. And there's so much out there in the world that the enemy uses as a decoy to lure us away, to, to, uh, to distract us, uh, to get us close to him so he can put fear in us, doubt in us, unbelief in us, and so that he can, his ultimate purpose is to destroy us, to steal, kill, or destroy so just a couple of things I'd like to talk about while we close here today. Number one, don't, don't let your relationships be a decoy to you. Now, I've got a lot of people in my life that love the Lord, that are believers. I have church members, friends, but there's other people in my life that, that you know, I'm ministering to. I'm trying to get the Word of God into them. I'm trying to uh, witness to them. My life is witnessing to them, and, I, and when I can, I try to let words witness to them. But, you know, my inner circle, people I surround myself with, are people of faith, people that love God, uh, people that will encourage me, people that will that will build me up, people that I that I can invest to, and they invest in me. I don't let my relationships become a decoy to me because it's amazing how influential other people can be in your life. You need good friends, Pastor. How how do I find good friends? You become a good friend. You, you need to find a good church. Uh, one of the things we talked about with decoys is the template. Uh, that they use to carve these decoys today. You know, there's a template in the Bible for church. Not everybody that puts a, a, a cross or a steeple on a building is a church. You know, you need to ask yourself if you go to a church, can the, can the lost, can they find Jesus in your church? Uh, when, they, when the lost come to your church, is the gospel proclaimed and demonstrated so that a lost person who's on his way to hell, can he, can he go to can he go to heaven? Can he find Jesus? Can he be born again in your church? Do they believe in the power of God? Do they believe in, do they believe in growing up spiritually? Do they, do they believe in the Spirit of God, which abides on the inside and empowers us? Do they believe in that? Or is it just religion? Is it just a decoy? Is it a template of man or is it a template of God? You know, here at Island Church, we've done our best not to be a mega church, but to be an effective church. And we have a very effective church. We minister in nations all over the world. We have island churches in other, in other nations. We have island churches that have come out of this church. Uh, uh, we, we do missions work. We do a lot here on the island with our youth and our, and, our, and our young people. We have large colleges and schools here that we minister in. So, so we fall into the template of the book of Acts. Uh, we've not been decoyed. We've not been, uh, you know, we've not uh, been brought into a religion that's ineffective. When people come to Island Church, if they need Jesus, they'll get saved. People that attend our church, they grow in the things of God. They find out about spiritual things, about the Holy Ghost, how He moves, how He woos us, how He helps us. I mean, Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead and is seated at the right hand of the Father so that the Spirit of God could abide in us, live in us, and empower us in these last days. And then, you know, we talk about religion, we talk about relationships, but you know, there's something else that can be a great decoy and a great distraction in your life, and that can be your hobby. You may say, Pastor, I'm a passionate waterfowler. I tell you, I go duck hunting every time I can. Every weekend, Sunday, uh, Saturday and Sunday, I'm out there in the marsh, I'm out there in the rise. Well, that may be a decoy in your life. You must make time for God. I know waterfowl uh, season is seasonal. Pretty much here in Texas, we can hunt from September uh, through the end of January. But listen, your faith is not seasonal. You need faith every day. 
You need to be close to the Lord every day. And I know there are times, don't get me wrong, I've spent Sundays in the duck camp, Sundays in the, in the deer camp, but that's very rare in my life. On Sundays, I'm at church. On Wednesdays, I'm in church. I do my best to, to schedule my hunting trips where I will not miss church. And listen, I know that many of you out there are in the outdoor industry and you've got to, you've got to, uh, you've got to do a hunt or fish or whatever you do on Sunday, but that's why we've got Outdoor Adventures in Faith. So you can hear the Word of God, receive it into your heart, you can grow in faith, and that way you can redeem your time. And if you, God will bless you, give you more time to hunt, more time to go to church. That's what He's done for me, and we're excited to be able to do it. Don't let your hobby distract you, because if you do that, then you'll one day lose it. God cannot enhance anything that you don't give to Him. You know, I'll close with this. A unique testimony in my life. I was saved as a young child, six years old, and grew up in the things of God. Then for over 12 years, I was away from God, out in the world, living in sin, living a terrible life. But I came back to the Lord, very humble, very meek. Uh, I told the Lord, I, I won't fish no more. I won't hunt no more. I won't surf no more. I give it all to you. And, and I remember I was doing it at a time in my life. I was fasting. I was praying. I was really, you know, coming out of that prodigal lifestyle. And the Lord was really helping me and blessing me. I was in Bible school at the time. I remember the Lord just impressed on me one day. I never told you to give that up. I never told you to quit. I never told you to quit hunting or fishing or surfing or doing any of those things. Actually, just the opposite. If you'll serve me with all of your heart, if you'll give your life to me, if you'll do exactly what I'm telling you to do and walk in the path where I've called you to walk, I'll bless your hunting. I'll bless your fishing. I'll bless your... Man, we've seen God do that over the last 40 years. We've fished in some of the most awesome places, freshwater and salt. We've hunted, oh my goodness, our deer hunts, our waterfowl hunts, other things we've gotten to do. I've no, I would have never dreamed I would have been able to do that, but God has blessed me. And in our surfing, we've surfed Hawaii, logged over 25 trips. Central America logged over 50 trips. God has blessed us. We've been there at the right time, at the right place, in many of these sporting things that we enjoy. But this is not our life. Duck hunting is not our life. Deer hunting is not our life. Fishing, surfing, our life is Jesus. And we want to bring Jesus to the outdoor world and to you. So here today, remember what we've taught you. Look at these decoys. Don't let the enemy draw you in where he can still kill or destroy. Pastor Rusty Martin, Outdoor Adventures in Faith. We look forward to seeing you next time when we talk about blinds, how the enemy can hide from you. But good news is we're going to teach you the word and you're going to see him for who he is and you won't be deceived by the devil. God bless you. We love you. Hello, everybody. Pastor Rusty Martin with Island Church and Outdoor Adventures in Faith. We want to end every broadcast, everything that we do on the internet here with an invitation or an opportunity for you to make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. It's very simple. The plan of salvation is very simple. Understanding it is very simple. A lot of people say, why, why salvation? Why do I need to be saved? First of all, we're born into a family. We're born into a human family that years ago in creation fell from God through sin. And because of that, man has lived under the bondage of that sin today. We see it right now everywhere we look. The wars, the sickness, the disease, the crime, the pain, the hurt, none of that's of God. That's all of the adversary of mankind. But the good news is, the Bible says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You must make the decision to make Jesus your Lord and Savior. It's that simple. The Bible says if you'll believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. So I'm giving you that opportunity right now. Pray this simple prayer after me. Heavenly Father, I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. I accept salvation. Thank you for forgiving and remitting my sins. Thank you that heaven is my home. Jesus is my Lord. And you, God, are my heavenly Father. I pray this in Jesus' name. If you've done that, contact us. We'll send you some information. Also, if you lived out of this area, we'll help you find a church. If you live in this area, come and visit us here at Island Church. We love you. Be blessed. And we'll see you soon on Outdoor Adventures.